What does it look like clinically when practicing CRM? Well, I think the best way to answer that is by reviewing what is the mechanism of change in CRM clinically. And what we're doing, just as a brief overview, is we are reconsolidating emotional learning that occurred in a state-dependent state at the, at the time of any kind of trauma that then has created fight, flight, freeze, hide, avoid, submit, collapse, or dissociate defense responses to the unbearable, intolerable pain of that initial experience of the trauma. And in CRM, clinically, what we're looking to do is to resource the brain, the body, neurobiologically, neurochemically, through attachment resources, through um, embodied somatic resources, spiritual resources, in order to create the safety, meaning there is a feeling of do it, I can do it, that it's, it's doable. The brain and body goes, we can do this. We can go into the deepest depths, the secret, hidden, darkest places of one's heart, their cells, their DNA, their, 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 their memory, and remember and feel and, and step into all of that fully and completely before the defense responses kick in as they originally did. And it is those defense responses, which are the actual presenting problems. That's, that's how people, people come to therapy with presenting problems, with clinical diagnoses that actually represent the fight, flight, freeze, hide, avoid, submit, dissociate, collapse defense responses to this intolerable pain that they've never, never, ever oriented toward fully or felt fully. So the emotional learning around those original traumas is what creates all of the symptoms and the diagnoses that we work with. So the idea is to create the brain and body-based safety that allows a client to remember the most excruciating, unbearable aspects of their truth, the truth of their life, and simultaneously experience numerous levels of resourcing that allow the access to that level of pain before the defense responses kick in. And when a person is able to feel fully oriented toward, step into and remember the worst of the worst of it fully, thoroughly, and deeply beyond anything they've ever been able to step into, it literally dismantles the need for the autonomic nervous system and the learning loops to continue to provide and to engage in these defense responses that are the symptoms of dissociation, medical conditions, anxiety disorders, depression, addictions, all of the relationship patterns, um, things like that, who we, who, we, who we engage with in order to avoid having to feel and look. So the mechanism of change in CRM requires a multi-layered, multi-level, multi-faceted array of different types of resourcing that are applied or stacked, nested, scaffolded simultaneously during the work so that a client can feel the true activation of the trauma while they're 100% or close to it, very close to it. Well, let me put it this way, resourced enough that they do not just click into a defense response, fight, flight, freeze, et cetera. And because when a client is doing trauma memory work or any kind of trauma, well, trauma memory work, if they are not fully in their body and are in one of the defense responses while you're working, the, the healing work and the transformation won't stick. It looks like it's sticking, but it doesn't last because the work is not done in an embodied state in the moment in a way that allows access of the state dependent memories so that the emotional learning loops and uh, can be reconsolidated so that there is no longer a need for these defense responses. But the only way to do that is to create the kind of safety that allows that to happen. Um, 
And so that's the mechanism of change. So the question then is, how do we do that? Clinically, what does that look like? Well, first we have our conceptualization that we that I've talked about in another segment that informs where is a client in their work? What are their capacities? What is their willingness? What are their fears, obstacles, and blocks? Not just to the therapy itself, but to actually finally healing. You would think that would not be something that would have a major interference in the willingness of the nervous system to actually do the work, but it does. Because change and and the uh, acknowledgement and realization that one has free will-based choices can be terrifying in and of itself. People want their lives the way they want it. They want to heal, but yet they want to keep things the same. They do want their cake and eat it too, although much of this is often unconscious. So what we're doing is choosing through our intuition, through our knowledge of the model, through our conceptualization of where a client is with all those blocks and obstacles and all the aspects of conceptualization, to determine what CRM resources are needed moment to moment. Um, and the exam the, some examples of, of, of the, the, the kind of categories or compartments of our resources are attunement. We use three levels of attunement. We use at least 10 different breathwork skills, um, different kinds of uh, ways and options to connect to nature to our historical ancient ancient experience of the natural world as a resource that's actually still in our dna from back in the day when that's how our ancestors lived as well as just the high frequency of of nature natural resources there's they're 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 divinely created there's they're they're not contaminated um in the way that that much in our world is so we are using the natural world as a resource. We create um, what we call either matrices or grids, depending on what aspect of CRM we're, we're using. And these are somatotropic maps that we create in the brain and body that create uh, different levels and types of uh, connection and remembering of, of the resources available to us within our bodies as well as outside of us in our multi-dimensional reality. We're also working with the distress and activation as a um as a resource. For us, you know, we there would be no growth. There would be no potential for growth, no potential to heal and grow and self-actualize and really truly live from who we really are, unless there were major problems and symptoms and distress. There would be no there would be no reason to 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 do anything to 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 heal and grow if there was no no discomfort so we see distress and the traumas as a gift as a resource it is our traumas and these horrific experiences that lead us to the ability to change how we are in relationship with ourself with and for people who are open to it with the, the higher realms, the spiritual realms, source, God, creator, whatever you want to call it, and therefore able to be who we really are here without staying in a contracted state. You, you have to have trauma in order to facilitate that to catalyze it. Um, so we see it as a resource. Core self, that for us, CRM core self is slightly different from other modalities that teach a core self aspect in that ours is um, actually in the trainings, we talk about actually what it is not, but for this purpose right now, just to say it is a non-intentional state of existence that is the only aspect of us that is not a dissociative part. Every other aspect of us is dissociated from our essential true nature. Core self is the state of beingness without doing. It doesn't think, it doesn't provide compassion or love or, or anything like that. It just is the frequency, the vibration, the unconditional love, the sound waves, the geometry of our energy 
that is the blueprint of source. And that is what we're trying to get to from the mission statement of clear out the crap so you can remember who you are. It's core self that we're trying to remember and embody. Because if people lived, everybody lived more embodied in core self, the world would be a completely different place and people's lives would be much more peaceful and much more expansive and much more authentic and in, in, in alignment with their soul rather than their ego needs, which is what causes all the problems in the world. We're also using sound codes, sound frequencies, vibrations, toning. We have the client's tone to break up neurobiological, energetic, neurochemical um, blocks to, to healing, to remembering, to releasing, and toning and sound does that. If you think about how they use sound to break up kidney stones or how an opera singer can break a glass, it's because the resonance, the frequencies and vibrations are in coherence and resonance with that which you are intentionally directing the sound, excuse me, the sound. So in CRM, we're using toning, the client's own toning to reinforce and strengthen resources and positive shifts while we're using the toning of the felt sense of the, the pain and the wound in order to loosen up the way that is held and allowed for, allow for a dismantle release and transformation of, of some of what needs, needs shifted. So we use sound coming from within the client as toning. We use sound from other musicians, artists, and cr creative being, you know, creative people who are um, engineering and producing music. Solfagio frequencies, extremely important in our work. Um, different types of sacred chanting, bilateral sound. Um, Brian Cumming is is the sound engineer that does a lot of our bilateral work. Um, we uh, for the generational work, I scour the internet to find different pieces of music for different cultures, different historical times that will facilitate access to generational trauma, that will facilitate the resourcing of generational trauma, and that is in alignment with the human being's highest frequencies, given what I know, at least, about the blueprint of how our cells, our DNA, the energy fields around our DNA, respond to sound frequency, sound waves, frequencies, and vibrations. We use sacred geometry. Sacred geometry is way too big a topic to really get into here at all, but it is, sacred geometry is the, the form, the mathematical form of that which is either an idea or a formless state of frequency and vibration. And intention is very much a part of what kind of sacred geometry is created. And, um, you know, if any of you have ever read or heard about the, uh, the, the, the kind of the programming of water by just singing to water, to singing to snowflakes, um, playing music to any kind of water. Um, and under the microscope, you know, you can see the effect of loving, beautiful, classical, even some kinds of, some types of other rock music, regular music has a very, very positive effect on the water molecules, their, 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 their coherence, um, you know, in, in the way they're developed. And if you think about it, we are 75% water. There's water and fluids in every single aspect of who we are. So therefore the sound, the way we use sound and the way we use toning is going to affect the sacred geometry of our cellular structures, of our molecular structures, of our DNA strands and the cell membranes. So that, that informs the fractal nature of CRM which is CRM is working to heal and unify and bring into harmony separation that occurs all the way down to the, the DNA, in the DNA, be, the separations between the in the communication between DNA 
and the cell and the cells, which creates, you know, the foundation of how our nervous system works, as well as our medical conditions. So that level of separation we're working with all the way out to the more, um, you know, through through the human through the human being as the separations from the ego states, the human being in terms of separation from self and intuition, through our separation from our ancestors, our families, separating ourselves from people who are beneficial for our health and well being, separation from our families, our homeland, our tribe, our culture, our language, our ancestral resources, separation from our homeland, separation from our original coherent spiritual belief systems, all of the, and all the way out to separation from source itself, source creator, whatever that is for a person. So this is what we're working with within the context of how are we combining the clearing out of neurobiological and neurochemical trauma like every other trauma modality does in order to make room and space for a reconsolidation and a reforming of the self and all aspects of the self from the micro all the way out to the macro in a way that utilizes sound frequencies and sacred geometry to bring those positive trans, trans, transformations into form in our human nervous system, changing our neural circuitry, changing our literal physicality in order to promote and solidify and integrate and unify all of all that is in us that is of for the highest and best potential for who we are and who we can be. And sacred geometry, sacred geometry is really important in many, many aspects of CRM and it's woven in along with the sound work and the toning work throughout CRM. So clinically, we are using all of these different resources, attachment resources, natural resources, breath work, attunement, metaphysics, the natural world, all of these different, the, the body itself and what we hold energy, energy structures, um, you know, to create the brain and body based safety that allows for a full remembering and and a full orienting toward the most horrific memories so that all of that can be reconsolidated. So we're juxtaposing many, many lever levels of resourcing with the uh, the most ex extreme neuro neural circuits of the trauma in order to dismantle the way everything has been wired together and and has created these life interfering problems and less than beneficial choices um, that people make in their lives that contracts their lives and makes them unhappy and and not not able to to live in harmony.